Well, this morning we were seeing how various people will respond when we seek to share the word of God with them. Uh, Jesus told us that some will hear God's word, but without guarding it in their hearts, the devil will come and he will take it away, keeping them from believing in him. He told us that some will hear God's word, but when trials and difficulties come, they will fall away because the word hasn't got into them. It hasn't taken hold of them. It's not gone down into the roots. He's told us that some will hear God's word, but the cares of this life, the pleasures and the riches uh, of the world will uh, choke out the word. It will stunt their spiritual maturity so that they go on even without bearing any fruit. However, he also told us the good news that there will be those who hear the word and as they keep it and as they persevere, they will find that they bear much fruit. They will become increasingly like the Saviour. They will, they will be people who continually do as he says and they will be those who are able to uh, live productively in the kingdom of God. Well, as now we come to uh, Luke chapter 8, verses 16 to 21, the Lord Jesus is continuing to speak to us about the word of God. He hasn't changed subjects. It's just that there was a lot of content, and I didn't uh, want to uh, overload you this morning, and so we have broken it up into two parts, and we're going to be considering the, the second part of what he says, really the conclusion of everything he's saying uh, in this sermon here this afternoon. And if there's one lesson, if we were to summarise these verses with just one thing, then it would be verse 18. And not only would it be verse 18, it would be the six words there at the start of uh, of verse 18, take care then how you hear. Take care then how you hear. So as we look at this passage today, I want us to see three reasons we should take care of how you hear. Three reasons to take care how you hear. Because now, now, uh, sometimes you wouldn't believe this, but sometimes preachers can be uh, accused of not being very relevant or applicable. Um, Well, if you wanted uh, something that has immediate relevancy, it's this passage right here. Because uh, you as Christians, me as a Christian, we are people who are hearers, who are hearing sermons uh, all the time. Uh, we, we should be anyway, uh, in the sense of coming along to church uh, as opportunity affords us. And so surely this is incredibly relevant to all of us. There's not a single person in this room this, this sermon isn't relevant to. Because all of us, the boys and girls who are normally in DBC Kids, you are listening to your teachers every week tell you about God's word So you need to take care then how you hear. And the adults in the room, uh, we are, I hope, regularly at church. We are regularly coming under the sound of the gospel. Uh, I know many of you uh, regularly come not out only on a Sunday, but you come out also on a Tuesday. Uh, we, we, uh, And so it is relevant to you to know... uh, why you should take care how you hear. And yes, I know I preach um, three times a week. Um, I have one Sunday off, graciously afforded to me, as has been the custom of this church to pastors since the days of Ken Dix, uh, to, to, ha- to, to, to soak in some ministry. But it probably won't surprise you that I don't only hear the Word of God one Sunday a month. I hear the Word of God Uh, regularly through online sermons and through opening my Bible and reading it day by day. And so this is relevant to me also. I need to know three reasons why I should take care how I hear. 
So with that, let's look at these three reasons. Firstly, we should take care to hear the word of God because of, of the clarity of God's word. The clarity of God's word. Now, Jesus has just given a parable. You remember a parable? It is a, uh, boys and girls, good way of remembering what a parable is, is that it is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It is a story about ordinary things, but the meaning behind those ordinary things, the meaning, the, the, the message of the story is all about the kingdom of God. It's all about God himself. And this Jesus just given a parable which took his hearers out into the field with the farmer in their imagination as he sowed the seed. But now Jesus gives another parable, a shorter, a briefer parable, but a parable where he brings his hearers out of the field and into the ordinary home of the Israelites. He gives this incredi incredulous scenario of someone who lights a lamp only to place a jar over it or to put it under a bed. Now, we need to do some working out because in our minds we might be thinking of a lamp as a, a floor lamp. It's very possible you might be thinking of a floor lamp, which is, is often quite tall and uh, gives light. I've got a floor lamp in my living room that you, you light, you, you just turn that on and it, it's adequate for the for nearly the entire downstairs. Um, or you might be thinking about a bedside lamp. It, it's, it's about uh, this big. I'm sure you've seen a bedside lamp before, and you, you turn it on, and it's adequate to give light to the whole room. Well, Jesus isn't talking about those kinds of lamps. Uh, Jesus didn't have electricity when he dwelt among us in Israel in the first century. Jesus is speaking about a, a smaller instrument that uh, was, was almost like a saucer. And it was, it was about a, a, the size of the palm of your hand. And you would pour oil into it and you would place the wick um, on, on the end where it, it sort of had this funnel uh, shape. And you would light the wick and it would give a dim light. And this light doesn't give as much light as our modern day lamps do. I'm not really sure if it gave very much light at all compared to what we would be used to. We would struggle to see anything using those kinds of lamps. Our eyes wouldn't adjust so easily. And so this is a lamp. You, you already don't have a lot of light in your house by using this lamp. And so Jesus says, no one, no one would use one of these lamps, uh, light one of these lamps, only to put a jar over it to block out all the light. No one would take one of these lamps and stick it under a bed in order that, that only the underneath the bed is seen and that the rest of the home remains in darkness. Such an action would cause you, the whole room to become pitch black and would make the lamp redundant. Well, as we saw that the seed represented God's word in his previous parable, it's now the lamp that represents God's word. And this picture isn't a unique pic, pic, uh, te teaching of Jesus. This is Jesus borrowing from Psalm 119, verse 105. I quoted it this morning in one of the prayers. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And just as a lamp brings light in the house, so the word of God brings clarity to our hearts and lives. And it would be foolish for us to neglect it. It would be foolish of us to forget about it. It would be foolish of us, having heard it, to hide it. So how does God's word bring clarity? It reveals the hidden things of our hearts. Look what Jesus says in verse 17, for nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret 
that will not be known and come to light. Now, yes, this is true. This is, in one sense, speaking of the day of judgment, but I think it's speaking about something more immediate than that. It is speaking about the illumination of the Word of God. It is speaking about how the Word of God, when heard and when read, uh, it, 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 it shines a light into our inner person. You see, the world tells us that if we really want to be happy, then what you must do is listen to your hearts and follow them. I remember a conversation uh, with a, a so-called spiritual man who uh, told me that the way to find happiness was simply by looking within. I told him that actually uh, I had looked within on many occasions and it was not looking within myself that gave me any happiness or any reason for joy whatsoever. You see, the problem is, but it's true to say the problem is that there is nothing more deceitful and there is nothing more wicked than the human heart. You, you know how, how your heart justifies you. Even by me saying there's nothing more wicked than the human heart, you've already thought of reasons why that's not true. You've already argued that to a degree. Uh, you've already thought of the objections that people might bring out. We're not all that bad. There are people far worse than me. I, I've got a friend who does prison ministry and he went into a prison in the south of the country and he was talking to a convicted murderer and this man while talking about the gospel and convicted that uh, about about my friend calling him a sinner said well i'm not as bad as the sex offenders on the other wing Oh, I'm sorry. The self-righteousness of the human heart, the deceitfulness of the human heart. It is able to conceal how evil we truly are and it expertly defends us. It expertly justifies our sinful actions, our wrong behaviours. But as we allow God's word to shine a light into our hearts, what happens? God's word often exposes what we're like. It tells us the truth about ourselves. There is nothing that can be hidden from it. From it. it reveals the depths of depravity that, that reside in our souls. It brings clarity to what we're really like. But it also reveals the secret things of our lives, not just the hidden things of our hearts, the hid- things that are not just hidden to other people, but the hidden to ourselves. It also reveals the secret things of our lives. So think of David, King David. And remember how King David committed adultery with Bathsheba. And finding out she was pregnant, what did he do? He conspired to cover it up. He conspired to have her husband, Uriah, murdered in battle. He, and, and he believed he got away with it. As soon as news reached him that Uriah had died, just according to plan, he uh, brought Bathsheba into his palace and he married her. No one would ever know. He'd cover it up. Cover the sin up. No one will know what I have done. But it was revealed, his secrets were laid bare, and how were they laid bare? When Nathan the prophet came into his presence and pointed to David and said, you are the man who has done this terrible thing. The word of God exposed the secret that he had been hiding, and it and it causing him to realise that he had, he had fooled everyone but God, he finally repented of his sin, seeking the salvation and forgiveness that is found only through faith in him, through God, faith in God. As we hear God's word preached, 
we discover that no sin is secret before an all-seeing God. We should take care to hear the word of God because it shows us how we can walk in the light. It exposes our hearts, it reveals the secrets that we think no one else knows about. It brings clarity. It brings clarity. And as it does this, it convicts us of our sins and leads us back into God. It teaches us how to live for him so we are no longer children of darkness. Paul says in Ephesians 5 verse 8, For at one time you were darkness, but you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. How do we do that? By taking care to hear the word of God, which brings clarity. But secondly, we should take care how we hear the word of God because of the sufficiency of God's word. Because of the sufficiency of God's word. So look there at verse 18. The Lord Jesus concludes his teaching by saying this. Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. In other words, the Lord Jesus is saying here that if you listen to God's word, if you really listen to God's word, if you really pay attention to it, if you really, if you really allow it to, to come into your heart and life and you guard it and you keep it, as the parable before has said, then you will be wanting for nothing. You will have everything you need. And he demonstrates this contra contrasting two people. There is the one who receives the word, and there is the one who rejects the word. The one who receives the word. This is the person who hears God's word, and, they f and, and what do they find? Initially, they, f they are made wise to salvation. They find that, that uh, there is a saviour who if they call upon him, their sins will be forgiven and they'll be made right with God. But is that all that the word of God has done for you? It's, it's not like, it's a, okay, I've heard, I've heard enough to be saved, so now I can do away with God's word and it has nothing else to tell me. I mean, many of you have read your Bibles more times than, than uh, you, you even remember. Uh, through your life. I hope that's true of you. Uh, but you carry on reading it. Why? Because you keep finding that every time you read through the scriptures that there are, there are more things to learn. There are things you didn't see before. And as we continue listening to the word of God, uh, we find that it has a storehouse of blessings for our soul. And the more of God's word that you hear, the more of God's word you will receive. Let me say that again, just in case you missed it. The more of God's word that you hear, the more of God's word you will receive. You see, if, if, you, if you neglect God's word, then you will forever be as, as, as the, the writer to the Hebrews says to those he is writing to, you'll ever be like a baby who's always drinking milk and never moving on to meat. You see, there is no situation that the Word of God does not speak into with its instructions, with its warnings, with its promises. And, and, and the, 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 the Christian, don't fear... Don't fear, believer, you will never come to the Bible and having, having just plunged its depths and, and uh, mined all of its riches so that it has nothing else to give you. Impossible. The more you come into it, the more you read it, the more you listen to it, the more you will find is there. The more you will find is there. I mean, I did seminary for four years. Um, what else can I learn, right? I mean, you know that's not true. But <laughs> that's not true. You see, uh, you, you can have a PhD in theology. 
There are people in this church who do have PhDs in theology. You, uh, to have uh, written dissertations on uh, complicated doctrines in the Bible. And yet those, those people who love the Lord, who love his word, continue to find that there is more and more to learn. He who, re- he who receives, he who has been given, the one who has, more will be given. This is an encouragement, isn't it, for you to continue pursuing the word of God in personal quiet times and in making every opportunity that is available to attend to hear the word of God being preached. So there's the one who receives the word, but think about also the one who rejects the word. This is the person who neglects to listen to the word, who refuses to hear the word. And what do they find? Well, they receive no benefit at all. By neglecting God's word in the first place, they neglect the salvation that he graciously offers through Jesus Christ. They are not made wise to salvation. They see it has no power to to save them, to produce faith in their hearts. And when trouble and trial enters their lives, they have nothing to direct them, no comfort to fall back on, no promise to hear from the Saviour. But you know, this also speaks not only to the person who refuses to listen to God's word and neglects the salvation that God offers, this actually also speaks to the Christian who is neglecting to hear and to read the word of God. Because just as, the, as the, it's true that the more of God's word that you hear, the more of God's word you will receive for your life, it's true the less of God's word you hear, the less of God's word you will receive. The less blessing you will receive. So on Wednesday, uh, I'm at the Grace Baptist Partnership Conference. I have a double booking because I'm expected also in rugby that day in order to attend an Open Air Mission trustees meeting. I've missed three meetings already this year. Uh, I know this is being recorded, but it's okay. It can be public information. So I felt there was no getting out of it. I needed to go to rugby. So I had my breakfast, of course, and then I got in my car and I went down to rugby and I had the meeting. I returned uh, later in the day, later than I imagined because I missed the turning. And I uh, arrived back at the conference centre um, at just in time for dinner. And all the conversation around me is regarding how one ministry, one message that day had been so powerful and so effective and so encouraging and, and how, how thankful to God they were, there, they were to have been there to hear it. And I said to one brother, who may also have been a former pastor of this church, well, doesn't it just go to show you miss the meeting, you miss the blessing. It is true, you know, I just don't feel like going today. I just, I'm on holiday, so I miss church today. I'm going through difficulty, so I'll, I'll just not do that. I'll go back when I feel better. And as I said this morning, we're doing damage to ourselves because we're missing the blessing. I won't read my Bible today, I'm in too much of a hurry. And yeah, if we had opened the Bible that day, God may very well have spoken wisdom into your life situation for that day.
Eve, take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has, will be taken away. Because actually that's the other just stark reality, isn't it? The more we neglect this book, even the things that we were once taught begin to fade from our memories. How often we need to be in this book. How often we need to be hearing the word of God. To be reminded of the truth. I read a quote earlier today. Social media has its uh, uses. Um, Forgive me, I don't remember who the author was, but I do remember the quote. And he said that the, at least I think I remember the quote, uh, it's completely gone, disregard all of that. We should take care how we listen to God's word because it will never stop being beneficial to us. That's the point. It will never stop being beneficial to us. Remember how the Lord quoted Deuteronomy when Satan tempted him to turn rocks into bread. Jesus responded from Deuteronomy 8, chapter 8, verse 3. Man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And you know how it goes. That thing you forgot comes back into your mind. Martin Luther said... We need to preach the gospel to ourselves every day because we are so quick to forget it. And the fact that I forgot the quote in seconds of remembering it shows you how true that is. The word of God must be taken in every day. You wouldn't think to to not eat on one day. You You wouldn't go for that day, a whole day without bread. How is it that we as Christians so often go the whole day without the word? The word of God is sufficient for every area of our life and we harm ourselves when we neglect it. Well, lastly, we should take care how we hear because of the authority of God's word. The authority of God's word. As Jesus is speaking to the crowd, he's interrupted. There's a well-meaning messenger who's come to him with a report that his mother and his brothers are waiting outside. They've tried to get near him, but the size of the crowd is so large that they have been hindered from from getting anywhere close. And instead of, but instead of immediately going to them, Jesus does something very surprising. He says something very surprising. He tells the crowd who his mother and who his brothers are. Verse 21. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Who are Jesus' family? His family are those who hear him. That's the first evidence. The first evidence that you belong to the household of faith is that you will have a desire to hear the word of God. We should be like Peter when the Lord asked him if he, along with the crowds who had just abandoned him, also wanted to leave. And you remember Peter's response. Peter responded by confessing that there is no one else who has the words of eternal life. He said, to who else shall we go? You are the one with the words of eternal life. Is that the same for you? If you were asked to to leave the Lord Jesus, if you were going to uh, go away from him, how would you respond? Would you respond like Peter? Where else do I go? Because you, Lord, have the words of eternal life. You, Lord, have the words that give me salvation. You, Lord, have the words that uh, have authority in my life to speak into every situation, to give me direction and guidance and blessing. Or as the sheep who listen to their shepherd, the Lord's sheep are those who listen 
to his voice. Now remember, it's not those who listen to his voice become sheep, it's those who already are sheep, already are, are uh, given by the Father, who hear his voice, who listen to his voice. If we have no desire to hear, if we have no desire to read, if we have no desire for the word of God, then we have, may have questions about whether we really belong to him at all. His family are those who hear him, but his family are also those who not only hear him, but they obey him. We've already seen this coming up in, in Luke's Gospel, back in the Sermon on the Plain, with the story of the wise and the foolish builder. The wise person is the person who hears the words of Jesus and does them. The foolish person hears the words of Jesus. They, they may look the same, they, they hear just as well as the wise builder, but they do not do them. The second evidence that we belong to the household of faith is that we will obey the word. We will be doers, not merely hearers. And it has become, and it is becoming unpopular for Christians, for preachers, to talk about obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ's commands. If anyone talks about Christian obedience, they are very quickly accused of being legalistic. But Jesus said that we prove our love for him by the way we obey him. If you love me, said Jesus, you will keep my commandments. You keep his commandments not in order to gain his love, you keep his commandments because he has already loved you and given himself for you and because you love him. It is not a, legalism says you, you, you work, you do good in order to win the favour of God, but Jesus says you work and you listen to my voice and you do what I say because you've already received my love and because it is an evidence that you truly love me. It is not legalistic to say, Christian, are you keeping the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because by doing so, you are showing that you truly do love him. And if you are not keeping his commandments, what are you showing? We should take care how we hear the word of God because it is the Christian's only authority. We cannot claim that God is our father if we are unwilling to hear his word and if we are unwilling to obey his word. The child of God will want to use every opportunity they have to hear his word being spoken. They will want to hear his voice in the pages of the Bible as they read and as they meditate on it night and day. But they will also want to please him. Hearing won't be enough for them. They will want to be doers of his word. They will want to put it into practice. Do you know what happens as they do that? They begin to look like him. They begin to bear a family resemblance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are my mothers? Who is my mother, my brothers? Who are those who most look like me and have my family, the family resemblance? Those who hear my word and do my word. So the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Are we taking care how we hear the word of God? Because yes, these verses do speak of judgment to come. They do, uh, they do allude to the last day, where one day we will all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And how will he judge us? According to his word. And our response to his word today will determine the judgment he declares 
by his word on that final day. If we have heard and obeyed the gospel, then we will be saved according to the promises of the gospel. But if we have refused to hear and obey the gospel, then we will be condemned according to the warnings of his word. Take care then how you hear, because it is the the very thing that reveals the truth about you and about me, because it is sufficient for every area of your life and every area of godliness, and because it is the only authoritative word that we should listen to as it declares if we belong to Christ or not.